Welcome back to the show, where we take no part in the work of darkness, but instead expose them in the light of God's word. Today we're discussing the recent controversial commencement speech delivered by Harrison Butcher Jr., kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs at Benedictine College. His speech ignited a firestorm of criticism from mainstream media, and particularly young women, who have labeled it as misogynist, sexist, and homophobic. So, we decided to analyze the key moments from his 20-minute address that has everyone talking. Take a look. By making it to this moment through all the adversity thrown your way from COVID, I hope you learned the important lessons that suffering in this life is only temporary. As a group, you witnessed firsthand how bad leaders who don't stay in their lane can have a negative impact on society. It is through this lens that I want to take stock of how we got to where we are and where we want to go as citizens and yes, as Catholics. While COVID might have played a large role Throughout your formative years, it is not unique. Bad policies and poor leadership have negatively impacted major life issues. Things like abortion, IVF, surrogacy, euthanasia, as well as a growing support for degenerate cultural values and media all stem from the pervasiveness of disorder. Our own nation is led by a man who publicly and proudly proclaims his Catholic faith, but at the same time is delusional enough to make the sign of the cross during a pro-abortion rally. He has been so vocal in his support for the murder of innocent babies that I'm sure to many people, it appears that you can be both Catholic and pro-choice. He is not alone. From the man behind the COVID lockdowns to the people pushing dangerous gender ideologies onto the youth of America, they all have a glaring thing in common. They are Catholic. These are the sorts of things we are told in polite society to not bring up. You know, the difficult and unpleasant things. But if we are going to be men and women for this time in history, we need to stop pretending that the Church of Nice is a winning proposition. We must always speak and act in charity, but never mistake charity for cowardice. It is the world around us says that we should keep our beliefs to ourselves whenever they go against the tyranny of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We fear speaking truth because now, unfortunately, truth is in the minority. Congress just passed a bill where stating something as basic as the biblical teaching of who killed Jesus could land you in jail. I say all of this not from a place of anger, as we get the leaders we deserve. But this does make me reflect on staying in my lane and focusing on my own vocation and how I can be a better father and husband and live in the world but not be of it. Focusing on my vocation while praying and fasting for these men will do more for the church than me complaining about her leaders. I am certain the reporters at the AP could not have imagined that their attempt to rebuke and embarrass places and people like those here at Benedictine wouldn't be met with anger, but instead met with excitement and pride. Not the deadly sin sort of pride that has an entire month dedicated to it, but the true God-centered pride that is cooperating with the Holy Ghost to glorify Him. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. She's the primary educator to our children. She's the one who ensures I never let football or my business become a distraction from that of a husband and father. She is the person that knows me best at my core, and it is through our marriage that, Lord willing, we will both attain salvation. I say all of this to you because I have seen it firsthand how much happier someone can be when they disregard the outside noise and move closer and closer to God's will in their life. 
Isabel's dream of having a career might not have come true, but if you ask her today if she has any regrets on her decision, she would laugh out loud without hesitation and say, heck. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Harrison criticized the handling of COVID-19 under President Joe Biden, pointing out the negative impact it had on life issues. He also took a strong stance against abortion legislation, highlighting what he sees as hypocrisy from Biden, a Catholic who endorsed such measures. It's important to note, however, that as Christians, our ultimate allegiance is to God's word, not political parties, as stated in Proverbs 24, 11 to 12. Harrison's criticisms of Biden making the sign of the cross at a pro-abortion rally and declaring April 1st as a day to recognize transgenderism was particularly pointed. He argued that such actions are contrary to Catholic teachings. Now obviously, we know that the crucifix is a symbol of death. The cross was a tool particularly used by the Romans to barbarically torture people. Additionally, our ministry is not Catholic and we believe that Catholic doctrines are false. Christians should avoid associating with any denomination and simply adhere to Christ, since he is the only one who died for our sins and he's the only one who is worthy to make a name for himself. So it's clear that Harrison's intentions was to call for a consistency in faith and actions. Intentions, however, while kind-hearted and honest, unfortunately were poisoned with the irreligious and unbiblical doctrines of the Catholic faith. He also emphasized that those perpetuating harmful ideologies, including COVID lockdowns and gender ideology, often identify as Catholics. This statement was controversial, but it underscores a broader point, the need for Christians to stand firm in their beliefs. Ephesians 6.14 tells us to stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the, best, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Harrison's call for Christians to step up and be vocal about their faith echoes the biblical mandate to be the salt and light in the world, Matthew 5, 13-16. He urged believers to speak with charity, yet never defend sin. This is a critical balance to maintain as we are called to love others while holding fast to the truth of God. Next, Harrison mentioned a congressional bill that could make parts of the Bible illegal, thus infringing on the First Amendment. Strategically and scripturally, he did not advocate for revolt or rebellion against the government, but rather, he pointed out that America is suffering the consequences of its sins. 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Finally, the most honorable part of his speech was his statement on womanhood, Harrison declared that the greatest duty of a woman is to be a homemaker, which sparked outrage across social media. But he basically told women that they're not going to find fulfillment in their career. That their most fulfilling vocation is to be a wife and mother. And for some women, that will be true. And for other women, that won't be true. It's almost like a random man can't decide how each individual woman will feel. And I know the LGBTQ plus community isn't your thing so you won't care about his opinions on that. But this man said that choosing the amount of children that you're gonna have is playing God and should not be done. And I know for a fact that you were fitted for a diaphragm in the 90s, so sit down. This man said that the women at the Benedict Dean uh, College graduation where he was a commencement speaker, that they should not be happy about their degrees. They should be happy about starting a family, becoming women, doing housewife stuff. Like, this man said that out of his mouth to women that have worked hard for four years, women that are in debt, women that are qualified to do whatever the heck they want to do. Yeah, you shouldn't be happy about your degree. You should be happy about being a mother. Who are you? Who gave you the right to say that? Then he went on a huge Pride Month rant. He said that Pride Month is a deadly sin. And he said we, we gave a whole month. We, we have a sinful month. Which, again, I'm not saying you have to agree with every single LGBTQ issue or take. But you can at least acknowledge that they have been through a lot and that having this month allows them to feel safe, allows them to feel loved, and allows them to feel seen. And the Chiefs have a huge PR problem. We know that Travis Kelsey is a huge leftist. He's with Taylor Swift. He does a Pfizer commercial. Lastly, he said DEI is tyrannical. So y'all, please drop in the comments. While the modern world often views such statements as sexist, it's essential to consider the biblical perspectives. 
Titus 2, 3 to 5 instructs older women to urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. Let's compare this with the media's praise for Travis Kelsey, a teammate of Harrison's who promotes partying, drinking, and sexual immorality. Kelsey and his girlfriend, Taylor Swift, a 30-year-old and married woman who continuously makes paganistic tunes about her failed situationships, are celebrated. Yet Harrison, who promotes family values, God, truth, and womanhood, is vilified. This glaring hypocrisy highlights a cultural shift away from biblical principles. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 5.10, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In conclusion, while you may not agree with everything Harris Jr. has to say, and while we still condemn the Catholic doctrine, his speech was a call for Christians to live out their faith boldly and consistently, despite the consequences that the leaders of this world might assign to us. Let's remember that true followers of Jesus Christ aren't defined by denominations or cults, but by their adherence to the commandments of Christ himself. As we navigate these challenging times, let's hold fast to God's word and speak the truth in love and remain steadfast in our faith. John 8.32 says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And that's our perspective. God bless.